I do. You know who's first? I do. Do you? No. Ooh. <laughs> well, I, I could win it. You guys know? Yes, Crowley! Who do you think it is? More. Mr. Crowley! Which one? Crowley! Uh, Crowley. We'll see. Just one second. <laughs> Day, I see you hitting harder. <laughs> it's very beauty. I mean, you know, it's one of those things. It's like, it's like, yeah, screw that, Shepard. <laughs> no. That was so much fun last night, guys. That was. <laughs> you were, you were, you were, you were so fun to have you back on stage, man. So uh, great. My pleasure. Are you going to play drums, Richard? Yes. I was going to do a little something for you. I worked up. Well, you know, later. I'll save you. Thank you, buddy. Oh, guys. Pleasure. Yeah, that was fun last night. How you guys doing? You good? So, uh, how many of you are new to this uh, convention? Oh, well, I'm just going to warn you now. You're going to make friends whether you like it or not. Uh, you're going to have a good time whether you like it or not. And I will abuse you whether you like it or not. Not really. So uh, it's good to be here, and um, thank you guys for coming as always. Uh, it's great to be back uh, doing creation shows. It's so much fun to do. I love the, I love the people here. I love the way these these things are run. We missed uh, you. Yeah, you did. <laughs> but uh, I'm here. what? I'm on you. Yeah, we know that. <laughs> What's not to like? <laughs> exactly. Um, but uh, listen, this is, it's a very special thing. I mean, you think about it, there's not many shows in the world that, uh, that have ended and still have just as much passion and uh, energy behind it as this one. So, um, we, we obviously were in a very difficult time. We're, we're on strike, the writers are on strike. <clears throat> and uh, for a very, very likely, the uh, uh, video game group contracts will be on strike soon and listen just just accept the fact that it's going to be a little weird for a while but we'll tidy it up and we'll eventually clean it up and if you're interested in the politics of it the fastest answer i can give you is uh the world has changed the way we watch has changed well, how we watch has changed and we need contracts that reflect that Unfortunately, what that means is that, you know, you know, you can ask me about working with tall people, but you can't really ask me about episode 23, season 8. You know what I'm saying? But we'll bear with that. We'll get through this, and sooner than you know, we'll be back to, What's it like working with Nisha? I can't wait. How excited I am for all your new questions that I've never heard before. But uh, I love to see you happy, smiling faces. It makes me. There's a lot of people I know here. I've seen you over the years, and uh, as I said, a lot of you are new. So welcome, enjoy, sit down. <laughs> You're late. Did you bring a note? <laughs> but sit down. Stop trying to be clever. You don't have a microphone. I do. <laughs> oh, they never learn. Never learn. Who's first? You're first. Speak. <laughs> what? Can't hear you. So? <laughs> I have a question for you because I feel everyone has a story about this. What is a vacation or travel plan where everything just went to hell and went wrong? Vacation or travel plan where everything went wrong? Yes. Thank you for reminding me. 
Good God, girl. Um, no, um, yeah, I mean, I remember I, I was playing in a band called Barracudas in the very early 80s. And we were very well known in France. We couldn't get arrested in England. We were, literally. And uh, we were very well known in France. And so I had a girlfriend who had a, in England, it was a very weird thing to have. It was a 1971 um, fake woody sided Ford Grand Torino station wagon. And it was actually really cool because it was in England. Here it's like, that's what my mom used to drive, <laughs> you know, in, in the 80s when they couldn't afford a decent car. They had this, you know, with a rear window that went down, and, you know, the, the plastic woody side. And it was just this V8 thing. Everyone, you know, we drive down the street in England and it was like, oh my God. Because we didn't have a lot of other cool things. So we all loaded into this car, we were heading off to France. You get on a ferry in England, right? You get on a ferry. As we landed, it was some sort of problem. And uh, a guitar player was arrested in the, uh, at the docks and arrested and taken away by Special Branch. And what it was is he had a very common name, and his very common name matched somebody who had embezzled three Rolls Royces and was running a drug or something. It's like, it's like, it's not me. This is Chris Wilson from the Flaming Group. So it's like, you know, not a guy that you shouldn't know who he is, but he's definitely not the guy they thought he was. So we had to then go to France and go play a gig, and we couldn't get him out. They wouldn't let us, let, let us know what was going on and investigate. And it's very pre-internet, you know, sort of era. And records had to be gotten and found. So this poor bastard eventually gets out of jail, sort of a like dock jail, and they throw him onto, at the last minute, I think he had to jump two feet to get onto the next uh, ferry. Gets there, lands at the other end, and there was nobody there to pick him up. <laughs> oh so he goes, like, that's it, I quit the band. He turns around, goes to the local cops, they put him back on a boat and send him back. Makes his way back all the way to London from Dover, which is like five hours of stress. Gets home, lands at home. We don't get paid for the gig because he's missing. And there's a piece of the contract that said there had to be five people present. So we got screwed, everything gets screwed. We don't know where he is, somebody's forgot to go get him. But we don't even know that he'd made it across the water. And he finally gets home to his bed, having quit the band, and going, that's it, screw them, I'm never going to talk to them again. And as he lands, my mum and dad came in, picked him up, put him in a car, took him to a small airport, and he went in a propeller plane into oh. France. So yeah, that's a pretty bad holiday. <laughs> that's about the only way I can do it. Um, yeah, okay, what do you want? Hi, Long time fan, first time questioner. I know that you did a show with some native wells. You always played the straight person in the show. What would you want to be? The fixer, the body man, the planner, the con person? If you would, skill set, yes, exactly. What skill set would you want to have of the native wells that you were playing in the show? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, my skill set is not enough for you. Am I not all encompassing, all powerful, and uh, magnificent? to that show somehow, I don't know, we can't talk about it. But uh, in that context, uh, uh, he said in any other show you would have been the hero. In any other version of that show, I was the good guy. So, uh, but because it was a show about bad guys, I wasn't. But uh, no, I wouldn't want to be any of the other things. Good question, but just not for me. Hello, I'm Hi. Lady. Um, Who? Lady. Lady? It's nice. Scottish. Did you used to be the lead singer of Warrant? No. <laughs> so, my question is, in the show that we cannot talk about, yeah. uh, is there anything you wish your character could have gotten to do it with their life? See, the weirdest thing is, like, because we're restricted in what it is that we can talk about, we're trying to find clever ways of talking about what we don't want to talk about, and don't want to create a situation where we're promoting something that, that does that. So, 
But I will tell you, separate from that, and that's not because of this situation, is write your own fan fiction. <laughs> I told you guys, there's a, 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 I went to a convention in Germany, or no, I think it was in Austria, and, uh, and they gave me, this girl gave me a t-shirt and she had printed on the front, write your own fan fiction, and on the back was the best word you could ever have across the shoulder blades uh, that works perfectly in situations like this, which is, NEXT! <laughs> Hi Mark, my name's Adam, uh, I just wanted to make a statement, your work is brought me out a tremendous amount of joy in my life and you're the favorite part of anything you're in. My favorite part. Of oh. I left the money on the side table. You can pick it up. <laughs> That's it? Uh, uh, waffles or pancakes? <laughs> wow, we're, we're down to waffles or pancakes. It really does depend on the situation, and the trouble with the arrogance of Americans, of which I am, and a very proud American, is that we think that all pancakes and all waffles are the same. Oh, and they not. are not. So waffles around the world are very interesting. Belgium, they're very different. And pancakes are very, very different. So, uh, now if you're going to talk about crepes... <laughs> yes, but only with a little butter, lemon juice, and powdered sugar. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Does that mean I don't... I don't like biscuit uh, with maple syrup and butter. No, I love all those things. It gets a bit weird when you start adding bacon and stuff, but... I uh, no, no, it does. You, you, you're most the Midwest, you know. This is the upper Midwest. It's like, you have bacon with everything. Can I get a Coke with bacon? We are an unhealthy lot in general, um, but yeah, it's like salt, fat, sugar, all good. Love it. Go. Hi, I'm Nico. Uh, first, my dad says hi. He's a huge fan. He can't be here today. Um, Where is he? On his way to Cabo. Really? He cares that much? He's such a big fan. He got as far away from me as possible. Hey, love you, Mark. Right. Yeah, oh yeah, well, excuses, excuses. I mean, that's what you're uh, If you were a teacher, what subject would you teach of the five? Oh god, a teacher would shut up. <laughs> well, not something really scary. I mean, it, it, like, a convention is a very different, generally different group of people from the rest of the world in a lot of ways. But the way that the outside world looks at people in a convention is that you're weird and there's something wrong, right? And there is nothing wrong. But what it is, is I've found in general that people who go to uh, events like this tend to be reasonably well educated, some of you, um, <laughs> genuinely, reasonably well read, very tolerant, which is fascinating to me, from many, many different walks of life, because this seems to be the great leveler, right? This is the great leveler. It doesn't matter what you are or what you do or who you love or any of those things that seem to be important to the outside world. No, but it's a genuine statement. Here, it doesn't matter at all. I mean, I would venture to say that, like in the furry convention that's next door, they're actually, they're, no, 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 not make fun. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying they are far more polarized than we. They are far more having to stick to a particular format than we actually have to stick to. It, the, the, you, you, you're very much declaring exactly what you want to show, etc. Whereas here, you can be anything the hell you want to be. You're unified by a general love of, of a particular single subject, but underneath that single subject, which the outside world doesn't really understand, is camaraderie, an event to go to, something to do, something to get away from being a frickin' ER nurse or whatever it is that you do for a living. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's I can get to go to a place, see like-minded people, not get into fights or arguments. It's not competitive, which is extraordinary if you think about it. This is not a competitive environment. You know, it's um, money doesn't buy you status here, right? Uh, which is fantastic. No, it doesn't. And I'll show you why it doesn't buy you status. Um, but it really doesn't. I mean, having money is one thing, but 
Are you really any closer to me because you paid more money for a ticket? Are you really closer to me? Do I care about you less? You know, do, is that the truth? So, you know, I'm one of these people. <laughs> Make your mind up. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like, you know, to me, because this is an all-encompassing, all-inclusive place to be, it is vital that you understand that it makes no difference whether you came here and can't afford an autograph ticket or a, or a photo, or whether you can. It's the fact that you get to be here, we get to celebrate together. It's another reason why we have the Saturday Night Special, because that's an event that we can all enjoy. Okay. Okay. But yeah, this is the thing, it's like I, I much prefer coming to see the cheaper people. <laughs> Ones who couldn't be bothered to pay for a seat to see me up close and personal. But then you suddenly start realizing in a, in a Mark Shepard panel, you can sit anywhere. <laughs> so that's that. I love your head. And your glasses. Good glasses. Good frames. I like it. What? What would only hope, as soon as it says chrome hearts on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you. But yeah, so listen, so understand, yes, this is a difficult time because we can't talk about the things that make it easy for us to have a chat about something funny or whatever. But we all get our way through this and it should only be a matter of weeks or so before we're allowed to go back to say, I'm not promoting my previous employers. What I'm actually doing is sharing my memories of my existence. And once we get that ironed out, it's going to be a little more fun, right? Tattoos. You're a weirdo? You think you're a weirdo? Because you have tattoos. It's like the most normal thing in the world. I don't understand people who get tattoos. But I never understood why people get tattoos. Why do they get tattoos? Why did you? Why did you get tattoos? I have one tattoo. Yeah. Uh, well, she starts there, and you pay your money, you take your chance. <laughs> yes, I have one tattoo which covers most of my body. <laughs> hey guys, having fun? Who does? Argentina? You speak for Argentina now? <laughs> Good God, the arrogance of South America, I love it. <laughs> no, I know Argentina loves me. Hey guys, you having fun? Next question. Hi Mark, uh, my name's Maureen. I am wondering if you could invite any three people to have a dinner with, fictitious or real, alive or dead, who would they be and why? Uh, I like eating on my own. <laughs> Lose the baby. <laughs> uh, sold the baby, that's terrible! <laughs> sold it. <laughs> hey guys, you having fun? Uh, forget the rich people on this end. <laughs> but uh, what? I owe you nothing. <laughs> I owe you nothing. I'll stop it, you. So, all right, next question. Hi, so in the show that we cannot talk about, what? there is a line... What? Speak up! Oh, sorry. Um, so in the show that we are not allowed to talk about, there yes. is a line that a certain character says that goes something like, I deserve to be loved. Yes. And I was wondering if you would happen to know kind of like the... Like, <laughs> Are we quite finished? <laughs> if 
if I didn't know what. Like the motivation that it took to deliver that line? Like, yeah, the paycheck at the end of the week. <laughs> If you think of the context, be serious here for a second. If you think of the context of what that character may or may not have been talking about for the five minutes previously, about being in motels for long periods of time and watching a certain cable network that starts with H and I can't remember the other two letters, um, and they were watching something that might have been called, I don't know, boys or something similar to that. Oh no, no, girls or something like that. And that that line effectively kind of comes from wherever he's been watching hours and hours and hours and hours of hotel cable. So that's the, that's the translation, I think, of what that thing you were saying. That I think I saw it once. And I think that's what I got out of it. Anyway, moving on. No. I mean, this, this is about, we've now got to the, sit down! You are not 19. Or 18. You're not 19. I mean, how have we got to the stage where you literally can put two dots and a V on something and that represents? Who's this? this? By a Crowley. <laughs> what? They were sold out. Oh, I like it. You got a line like me. It's a good thing. Who's the next question? Uh, me. Oh, cool. I can come terrorize you because I'm over here. I'm really good. Glad I took my anxiety buses. Oh, I'm really glad I took your anxiety buses as well. Okay. <laughs> See, that's the thing. This is the greatest place to have anxiety in your life. Do you know why? You fall over, 500 people can help you grow. And then somebody who's smart will go, stand back and give us a room! <laughs> Best place to have a panic attack? Convention. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, right? I've had like seven. Well, now you're just showing off. Um, my question uh, is actually, um, I've been asking a bunch of people the same question so I can keep track. Hey! Hey! Okay, I'm trying. So you Better got... take some more anxiety meds. Wait for this answer. So you go into the attic. Right. <laughs> Write your own fan. Fiction. Next! Nobody gets away. What's the question? Uh, you go into the attic, would you rather find an adult stranger who you know nothing about, or 1,000 cockroaches? Again. I was right the first time, smiling. As you're defending a question. I mean, yes, I know it's difficult to ask questions at this time, but that's rubbish. I would burn the place down. Mystica, and I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. Woo! My name is Amistica, and I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. Woo! Yeah, Amistica. What a great name. Thank you. Is that your given name, or did you choose that name? I changed it. Right, no, but why did you change it? What is it about that thing you like? Um, it's Greek, and yeah. it will part Greek in my mom. Fantastic. Yeah. It's a weird thing when you're given a name, right? So you're given a name. You have to remember, I'm a parent, right? So I've got three kids. I gave my kids names. It's not their bloody fault. <laughs> It's not their fault. And it's like, they now have, an, have to have an identity that attaches to that name. And the, the logic of that is that, well, you can make it mean anything you want it to mean, because 
Your life is what changes the meaning. Rubbish. When you call your kid, you know, potato, <laughs> you're not exactly giving them a great start in life. So what, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, identity was a very, very different thing, right? Very, very different thing. Identity was more club or gang related or music related or you joined a group of people that did the same things and then you felt that you had a community outside the regular community that you could belong to. And, and now, I think because we've been so separated in community that, you know, not necessarily in this area, but you think of big cities, people don't know who their neighbors are anymore. People don't know any of this stuff. You don't have a community of people that you grow up with necessarily, right? They're, going to, they're transient, they move cities. There's no more, because there's no more 25 and 35 year jobs. So you don't tend to, it's all of these impacts that we have. And then we have the internet. So people with anxiety and people with, uh, other issues that are, that are against... It's issues? Who, who's got issues? <laughs> I, think, I think my money issues are flaring at this point. <laughs> What's up, shorty? <laughs> She's so nervous. Where's the heels? This is where the heels. I see them. <laughs> good, no, good God! <laughs> How you doing? All the best things come in small packages. <laughs> That's not a good phrase. <laughs> and some of the best things some come in best. small packages. <laughs> some are some better, larger. Thing. Yes. Cho yeah. Chocolate's better, larger. Oh. Oh. What are you doing? I'm just crashing your path. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead. I don't want to take up all your time. So. That's okay. Um, can I ask a question? Yeah. Who was your favourite red-headed Scottish actress to work with? <laughs> I had to put up with? Yes. <laughs> Elena's not a natural redhead, is she? No. Um, so that'd be you. <laughs> Let's go! As I was saying, so we had, we had this whole thing of identity, right? As, as, as kids, we had identity. You could be into a certain type of music, and that would bring you together. You could, you know, your haircut could probably reflect the music that you liked. And that stuff you would do, right? Now we are so individual, it is so difficult, I think, to find identity when we are so disparate in our likes and dislikes. And that's why I love conventions, because it kind of brings us together. It means you don't have to be fighting the entire world, because you know you have a group of people that kind of understand you already. You know what I mean? I think it's disingenuous to, to uh, uh, the, the fact that there are some real identity issues in the world. There are genuine identity issues in the world. Um, that, that everybody now has an identity issue. When I think, be really careful about quoting me on this because it's important. It's not, it's not that I'm, I'm dis, uh, dismissing the idea of, of identity or identity issues. But everybody having an identity issue, I think, comes from a lack of community and a lack of a feeling that you have a safe place to belong. And that we should all be in a situation where we don't give a damn what you want to be, who you want to love, who you want to be with, what you want to identify with. It's the fact that we have to now shine spotlights on so much. I think the pressure is on. I think the pressure is actually worse. And I don't think it helps because we're dealing with mental health issues that we never had to deal with before because nobody ever paid attention to them, not because they didn't exist. But we've got higher pressures which make those, which make those mental health issues way, way harder to deal with in society. Yes, we all talk about it, yes, we all say it exists, and then we're ignored on a bigger scale than we've ever been ignored before. How many people here have a genuine, don't bullshit, have a genuine diagnosed mental health disorder Jesus. This is now a very scary place, I don't know. I 
actually have never felt safer to be absolutely honest. <laughs> think about it. Just think about it. Just think about what's going on in the world. You know, if you're if you're struggling, if you are struggling, as so many people are struggling, yeah, I mean, whatever your politics has got nothing to do with this, but I'm saying we just went through a pandemic where the world stopped. I mean, we stopped, and then life did not continue in the same way since. You know, we, we've had to deal with this. And talking to a nurse up there, I mean, they had to deal with that aspect of it. We've had to deal with the aspect of losing people or being scared on a continuous basis, and all of this stuff that's going on. And uh, the, the world is a scary place. So if you're struggling, you have to do one, was it something I said? <laughs> Jerry Jessamy, yeah. So on this note, as you're running away, yes, understand that if okay, but understand that if you're struggling, reach out. There are people who understand. Look around you. Put your hands up again, those of you who identified just then. Look around you. Turn around. Look behind you. It's insane. We are all in this boat together. So if you're struggling, ask for help. There's no shame in asking for help. Uh, what's your question? Uh, my question is, uh, what's your favorite restaurant that you like to go to when you go to Las Vegas? I go to Vegas? A friend of mine runs a restaurant called STK in the Cosmopolitan, my buddy Stephen. And when I go there, I feel very cool because they could be nice stuff for me and steak. And, uh, but it's no fun unless you get to share it with somebody. It's actually the truth. Going to a great restaurant on your own is kind of nice, but going to a great restaurant with a friend or friends is way worth the effort. <laughs> Food is a lovely unifier. Food is a lovely thing to come to. And if you're Greek, you know that better than anybody. It's all about food in Greece. So, all right, what's up? Hi, my name is Samantha, and I'm- Samantha. Do in a month? Oh, a baby. You have to be worried then. Right? <laughs> you haven't paid your rent or something. Ooh, no, oh, could have been a big lunch, but now you know. <laughs> you look fabulous. I have a great piece of parenting advice uh, for you, which is do not accept any damn parenting advice from anybody. Tell you what to do. Oh, you know what you need to do. You need to do this. Smile, say thank you, and do what the hell you were going to do in the first place. <laughs> you are a mother. You are equipped on this planet with the ability to make decisions, and it's down to you. Thank you. People who love you will help you and care about you. And if you see this is true, it's an old age. So I'm so wrong to tell this is true. If somebody has what you want, and you you like what it is that they have. Ask them how they got it. So if you're seeing somebody interacting with a newborn and they seem to be successful, or, or you, see, you see parenting difficulty that you see somebody handling really well, ask them. There is no shame in asking for help. Same subject, right? So when you ask, maybe if you do what they do, maybe you'll get the result you, you'll get. Apart from that thing, all kids are different. Thank you. <laughs> Any parents here know all kids are different, right? Exactly. So yeah, just ignore advice. There is one piece of advice. Don't buy all that heavy crap that you think you need to buy at the beginning. Don't buy too much of anything. You'll never run out. Diapers are the only thing you need to buy a lot of. But don't buy things you think you're going to need because you're going to find out what you do need when you need it. Right? That's the trick. You can't insulate yourself against that. There you go. I got some parents in the house. Next! Oh, Hi. Um, I wanted to say it was really fun seeing you play drums last night. I can do that. Misha, Misha, Misha. Toronto, Jensen, Jamie, Misha. I'm going to go see the important people. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> the walk of shame. <laughs> so. You said you enjoyed yourself last night. I did very much. Um, I was just wondering what's your fun your favorite venue? You have to speak into the microphone so we can all hear you. Louder. What was your favorite venue? Louder! 
What was your favorite venue to play at so far? Venue to play at? Yeah. Croke Park Stadium in Dublin. <laughs> the U2, the opening of the Joshua Tree too. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty fun venue. Um, actually, I was just talking to Borja. Uh, I did a gig with Robin Hitchcock in 17, 2017, at the Fillmore West, which is one of my bucket list places to play, San Francisco. So I have a poster with Bill Graham Presents, which is kind of cool. It's a nice thing to have. Um, but yeah, I've played a lot of great venues in the world. Uh, outdoor festivals and fun stuff like that. But uh, actually, you know, there's some great small places. The other place we played here, the convention center, you remember when yeah. we did the gig at the convention center last time? What a stage that is. What a lovely place to play that. So hopefully one day we'll go back there. Good question. What? Well, next. Hi, I'm Amanda. <laughs> You're what? I'm Amanda. Amanda Panda? Yes. And I think it's cool that we can't talk about the show. Because you brought... Ooh, a contrarian. <laughs> I think it's cool that we can't talk about Misha. But right over my head, like everything goes over this. <laughs> you said something about anxiety. I wondered if you had any good coping skills that you want to share. Yeah, I tried drugs and alcohol. <laughs> she said good coping. That stopped working for me after a while. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd still be doing it. Okay. Um, I think one has to be very careful with medication. Yes. I think you need to remember that any any solution, quote, solution, that you would use to, to, well, it's supposed to help. It's supposed to be help along the way of work. So there's an implication that you have to do certain things to change the way one is triggered or ch change, change one's response. And you can use medication and you can use other tools. It's supposed to be tools, not solutions, right? Yeah. So that you don't spend the next 20 years taking some dopamine bullshit, whatever, that eventually will stop working for you, as drugs and alcohol stop working for me. Does that make sense? Yes. So I think if you, if you approach it from the side that nothing is necessarily good and nothing is necessarily bad, but there is no simple solution to anything, and every solution, if you want your life to be better, unfortunately includes work. Whether you want to lose weight, whether you want to be happier in some shape or form, uh, it requires work. It's the hardest part about it, and it's, it's not something we love to do. And anxiety, of course, precludes you from believing that you can actually do anything about your anxiety. It's like talking to somebody who's depressed and saying, cheer up, you know, it doesn't really work. But um, there are some good tools out there, and if you don't have a mental health professional to help you through it, you're an idiot. And you're dead now, there's a lot of mental health professionals who aren't that good. Find one that's good. And yet again, my suggestion is, Find somebody who is coping with anxiety, who's living the way you want to live in a certain area and go, who did you go to and what did you do? And then maybe try that and maybe see if that works for you. That's as simple as it goes. Who did you go to and what did you do? Me. <laughs> Me was AA. So, the psychological aspect, I had to take out the, uh, the chemical aspect of it because it just wouldn't work for me in that context. So everything had to be based on other people's experience and what it is I gleaned from their experience and try to take contrary actions. My life is difficult when I'm living in fear. That's as simple as that. Yeah. There's only two fears, you know that. The great news is there's only two fears. They're all the same. Two fears. Losing what you have or not getting what you want. And death falls into that. Everything else falls into that. That's the truth. And if you come to those, or learn to cope in little ways with those, because they're personal to you. Shut up in the back! <laughs> then you're well on your way to having a better experience than the experience you're having there. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. There you go. Um, yeah, my name is Lauren. I first want to say I'm glad you survived us here to answer. Oh, it's cool. Well, there's two choices in that one, too. You know, you survive it, or you don't. And um, I'm planning on giving up the Vikings home opener to see you, so it's a lot. Big deal. It's the Vikings, they'll still be there next year. We're in the same thing. What do you want? 
Enjoy who you enjoy, make friends, and I'll see you next time.